Egan Dubin. I'm currently working as a postdoc at Deakin University in the Center for Regional and Rural Futures. Uh, today I'm going to give you guys a quick presentation on some recent research our group has been working on uh, titled Multiplexed Electrochemiluminescence. This presentation is for consideration for the 2016 Bioanalysis Young Investigator Award. So electrochemiluminescence is electrochemically generated chemiluminescence, or ECL. So this technique is used as a detection, a detection method for a number of bioanalytical methods. So this method gives us temporal and spatial control over where the emission happens. It happens at, at an electrode when we apply potential. It doesn't need any excitation source, so we don't need lasers or LEDs, we don't need optics. So a couple of advantages this gives a technique, gives it a lot less interference. Uh, we only need to apply bias to an electrode. It also makes it a lot simpler and easier to miniaturize. The technique has good sensitivity and is sort of well established uh, with magnetic beads as a sort of bioanalytical technique by a couple of companies. Uh, we commonly use this ruthenium trisbipyridine or IUBP3 molecule that you can see down on the bottom left of this slide as our luminal for. So basically we can use this molecule to label, for example, a nucleic acid detection probe or a detection antibody and then use our magnetic bead as a solid structure to capture our target molecule. Our labeled probe comes and binds and we pull that magnetic particle down to an electrode, apply a potential, and then we get light out. We quantify that light and that light gives us a basically a measure of how much of our target molecule we've got at the electrode. So multiplexed ECL has been around for a while. Uh, for example, uh, Mesoscale Discovery is a company that sells a multiplexed ECL instrument. Uh, the way we want to do multiplex DCL is fundamentally different from the way that it's currently sort of approached. So these systems that are already in the market uh, use a sort of a, a many electrode, many working electrode approach, where every working electrode is set up to detect a different analyte. What we want to do is modify the ECL chemistry, so change those ECL active labels uh, to generate labels which emit at different wavelengths. So then instead of having to look at various different spatially separated areas, we can look at a single area which is emitting at different wavelengths, quantify each different wavelength of light, and get a massively sort of multiplexed analysis in that sort of different manner. So that'll give us much higher density uh, sensing arrays and potentially open this sort of approach up to much sort of smaller uh, portable point of care analysis analytical systems. Uh, so the way we're going to do that, as I mentioned, is basically expanding the chemistry of those ECL luminophores, developing complexes that have got different potentials and different emission wavelengths. So initially what we decided to do was look at multiplexed ECL in solution and developing the actual molecules that we could use as these uh, you know, different colour luminophores. So here you see a series, we've got three different metal complexes. On the far left, we've got a ruthenium complex, which has a redder emission than our standard ruthenium trisbipyridine label. So it's right out towards 700 nanometers. In the middle, we've got an iridium complex, which is very green. So, you know, a good 150 nanometers different. And on the far right, we've got a blue complex, another iridium complex, which emits in the sort of, you know, the 460 to 470 nanometer region. So these three molecules have got very different emissive properties, but they've also got different electrochemical properties. So can we put all three of these into a solution and individually quantify the emission from each complex? So we started analyzing the emission from these systems using a couple of different approaches. Uh, we used CCD spectrometer, which of course gives us this nice uh, wavelength-based uh, data output, but we also used our standard digital sort of camera to look at the emission from these systems. So this image in this slide shows uh, the first three rows show each uh, luminophore by itself in a solution. So we can clearly see green emission, uh, red emission, and then blue emission. The bottom row shows photographs captured at each different potential. This is the potential that's applied to the electrode for a mixture of all three. So what we found was we could actually pull apart that image and look at the individual red, green, and blue channels and uh, get quantitative information from each one of these complexes successfully when they're together in a mixture. So this was in a, an organic solution, so not really applicable to a bioanalytical system, but it really sort of opened up that idea of using this technique for a sort of multiplexed uh, imaging approach that could be, uh, for example, used on a, a cheap sort of smartphone using the camera of the smartphone as a detector, or a, uh, you know, a digital SLR as a sort of detector for this multiplexed uh, bioanalytical detection. 
So after that initial success, what we're really trying to do now is push this new approach towards the uh, towards some applications. So the first thing we needed to do was develop uh, water-soluble versions of these iridium complexes that still had those you know suitable emission properties. So we've successfully developed a range now of, of water-soluble iridium complexes. The next step is to modify those complexes so that they have correct groups for bioconjugation. Uh, we've taken a couple of those complexes, a red one and a blue one, and we've successfully managed to do the same experiment in water with a mobile phone. Uh, so that's an interesting paper if you, if you want to have a look at that. Uh, so what we're going to do now, developing the bioconjugatable versions of those complexes and apply them to another project that I'm working on, which is a microfluidic system for a point of care diagnostic avian influenza. Um, so you can really sort of get an idea for the simplicity of these systems. The picture down here on the left is an ECL-based system for detecting uh, influenza RNA. So we've got a screen printed electrode, which is that blue, uh, blue thing you can see within that Perspex block. That's got a magnet underneath it, which pulls those magnetic beads down to the electrode, uh, which have captured our influenza RNA. And using that device you can picture there, we can easily detect a couple of femtomol of, uh, of RNA. So the next step now is taking these new iridium complexes and developing, applying them to this sort of technique and developing them into a sort of highly multiplexed uh, microfluidic using electrochemiluminescence as the detection technique. Hopefully the brief presentation has given everybody an idea about what we're sort of trying to develop here. Uh, if anyone is interested about the technique or any of our publications, search for me on Google Scholar and have a look. Uh, lastly, thank you very much for all these people here. As we all know, a lot of this research would not be possible without, you know, strong, fantastic collaborators. Uh, and lastly, uh, vote for me for the uh, Bioanalysis Zone New Investigate Award 2016. Thanks for listening.